Michael John, the bass player for Blackstone Cherry. Ultimately, and uh, like for me, uh, when we were writing 
writing the song, I was thinking, you know, about my dad and what he went through, my grandfather passed away. Um, we've got quite a few friends, a couple of them were out with us actually, that have lost their dads, you know, some at a very young, very young age. Um, so it's kind of, that's more of a message of, uh, you know, appreciate what you have, show people in your life that you love, show them what you love while you have them, because you never know what's going to happen. You know, there's all the pieces free. It's just like the, the concept of you know, freedom's not free, obviously. You know, but peace ultimately could be if everybody at once across the world just settle down and realize there's no reason to cause all this. You know, there's no reason to fight over oil. We should you know, share what we have to try to help somebody else prosper a little bit further. You know, there should be no superpower as far as the governments are concerned, all the governments should band together and do what they can to help each other out and to help the people. What's the best thing about being on tour? Uh, catering. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, well, I mean, the alternative to touring for anybody is work. And I've punched the clock many times. I've done, I've worked a lot of different jobs from construction to factory work to gardening, you name it. And uh, touring hands down beats it every day because uh, uh, I get to play music every night with my three best friends and all of our career guys are our best friends. I graduated high school with a tour manager. You know, we're all we're a band of brothers for sure. You know, so getting the, the opportunity to spend my life playing music in front of people that love our music and to meet with new fans and see new places, and new faces, and all that is the best thing in the world. What's the craziest thing that's happened to the band on stage? Uh, we played Wembley Arena with White Snake and Death Leopard in 2008, I believe. Uh, we'd done a two week run with them uh, in the UK. And Wembley, Chris turned around and was kind of giving us this odd look and he was trying to tell us that Jimmy Page was watching her set. We were all like, dude, no he's not, you're crazy. Just because we're in London, you think Jimmy Page is watching us, you're crazy. And sure enough, after it was said, uh, he was walking down the hallway with Richie Sambora, and uh, we all had the opportunity to talk to him and told us that he was really into our band, and was a fan of it, and all that, and we were just awestruck. So I'd say that was probably the craziest thing that's ever happened. What's the craziest fan encounter you've ever had? <laughs> well... Uh, there have been some overzealous girls every now and then, that, uh, especially for poor Ben, because uh, Ben's the pretty boy in the band, quite obviously. Uh, he's got the blonde hair, has the Randy Rose kind of vibe. Um, you know, there can be the, the crazy girl fan, especially for him, that can stalk him in any particular situation. I mean, it's happened to all of us, but that poor kid gets important to anybody. Um, yeah, I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> Who would you like to see yourself touring with and why? Uh, I would love to go with Foo Fighters. Uh, I've always been a big Foo Fighters fan. Uh, I was a huge Nirvana fan. You know, the whole grunge scene, I was just barely old enough to get it when it happened. Uh, so, I mean, any number of the grunge artists in particular would be great, but I'd love to go out with the Foo Fighters. I think the Foo Fighters mentality of life, just, you know, have a good time. They're, Music videos are hilarious. They're funny people. Uh, I've got a, a buddy of mine in Nashville. Uh, he's actually from here. He lives in Nashville, Tennessee now. He's a photographer. He's Def Leppard's photographer. He's a really good friend of mine. But uh, he shot uh, Dave Grohl, and uh, he told me he just shot Dave Grohl, and he came to Kentucky to shoot John Fred for uh, Modern Drummer magazine. And I was there with him, kind of like assisting him that day. It's pretty sober. Best buddies. Uh, and he told me that, because I helped him pick up some of the stuff and we were moving it and everything, and he said, you know what, you guys and Dave Grohl are the only artists that I've ever shot that have ever helped me pack my stuff. And knowing that Dave Grohl being who he is, will have a dog we're taking photos of him, and be like, okay, next set, go oh, here, let me grab this, and you have to carry that. That's just, it's just, it shows his character. He's the kind of guy that's gonna help anybody out. He's not too good for anything. The next two are from two fans. Why did you blame it on the boom boom? <laughs> uh, we, we really wanted to coin like our own term, you know. Uh, there's so many different, you know, sayings and things that have become cool over the years that 
nobody really knows where it came from. Sometimes you do, most times you don't. So we wanted to kind of come up with our own thing and uh, say it in kind of a funny way. So that whole song was just kind of based around the idea of us coming up with something cool to, you know, a new s slogan or term that people can use. And it's worked pretty well. I see it on Facebook all the time. If you could have any superpower, what power would it be and why? I'd like to be able to fly. So I could fly, as soon as the show got over with tonight, I could just lift off, go home, see my fiance and my two little girls, and come back for the next show. Yeah. But I have to be lightning fast. <laughs> flying. I mean, like, close them up. I could just materialize things. I could be. Any advice to people in bands trying to make it big? Be original. Don't listen to the radio of what's playing today and say, okay, I've got to be that to be cool enough for people to like my music. Don't listen to songs from 50 years ago and say, I'm going to be the new version of that. You know, there are bands out there, I mean, we've toured with them that sound exactly like, or does that they're exactly like the Beatles or exactly like whoever. Don't sound exactly like anything. You want to draw influence from something? That's great. Everybody does. We do. Everybody does and should. But don't draw so much influence from one particular act or artist that you start becoming like that. You've got to leave your own imprint and create your own identity and become your own person and individual. Because if you don't, you're just some other jerk playing music. Any last words till we end the interview? Uh, just a big thank you to all the fans. Uh, thanks for the support. Uh, we've had two sold-out headlining tours in the UK now. It's all thanks to you. Uh, we're getting ready to start working on our new record. Uh, after this out, after this uh, tour is over with, we're going to go home and start working on some new material. We've got a few one-off shows and things like that. But uh, new record will hopefully be out sometime next year. So 